Welcome back, doctoral students. Today we're going to cover how to find scholarly articles in your field and the best databases and the best strategies to do so. We're at the FAO Library homepage and we're going to click on Library Guides. and educational leadership. This main page is what we'll do today. Now the library has access to over 100 databases, but not all of those databases are suitable for your use. If you stick to the databases listed here, you will do more than enough to do excellent research in your field. ERIC is an educational database. It is the educational database, so it is at the top. PsycInfo is a database devoted to psychology, but educational psychology is a component in PsycInfo and so well worth a look. Emerald is a bit of a surprise because it is considered a business database, but it has a great deal on leadership, and management and human resources that has proven to be very valuable for doctoral students. Social Sciences Citation Index, also called SSCI, is a very scholarly, very large interdisciplinary database within the social sciences. So education figures in it, so does psychology, so does management, and so do some other fields that can offer a very rich cross-pollinization when you're working on your research. So I do recommend it. It may be low on the list, but it's, it's not far low. It's, it's very valuable. Dissertations and Theses is a database devoted exclusively to master's and PhD level dissertations and a great many of those, an overwhelming percent from 97 to the present, are available in full text so that you can read them. And if someone is, has worked on a project similar to yours, you can see their bibliographies, you can understand their research, perhaps um, contact them and borrow their instrument if you found it valid. We'll be talking more about instruments in another video. Educational index retrospective would be a low use item for most of you. It's historical in nature. It's covering, covering materials published from 1929 to 1983. So unless you're doing a deep historical background on your topic, it's perhaps not a database you will end up using. And Omnifile Full Text Mega is a large general database which has an education component I don't find it particularly useful, but if you're a completist, you might give it a look. Let's start with Eric. Now, you may recognize this interface. It is the EBSCO host interface. You might have used it uh, as an undergrad, either at this institution or at others. But we can see here that it is searching the database called ERIC. So it has a certain front end, but the data behind it is the ERIC data. I'm going to start with a very simple search because we will be talking about more complex searches later. So I want to start simple. Your most basic search in most of our databases is very similar to a Google search. It has a default AND, so you rarely need to put an AND. And it will attempt to find anything that has these keywords anywhere in the title or the abstract or the name of the journal or a subject. So this is your basic keyword search. This basic search brought up 369 results. Now let's talk for a moment about what these results are. And in talking about it, you might want to look down here at source types. Eric is not an exclusively scholarly database. 
like many feminized professions such as librarianship, teaching, and nursing, dual tracks developed early in this profession. The track of the practitioner, the librarian, the teacher, the nurse, and the track of the academic. Usually the practitioner um, was very often a woman, while the academic was a man. So these professions have databases that reflect this decades-old split. In ERIC, you see that there are articles from academic journals, but there are also objects called ERIC documents. More on those later. There are citations for books or chapters in books. There are magazines, though more correctly they'd be called trade publications, and there are educational reports. Now the quick answer for how to get scholarship is to simply click on academic journals, and you can see that brought our results down to 191. And that is what you will do most frequently. However, so you're aware of what's in these other categories. Eric Documents is an incredibly mixed bag. It can be dissertations, it can be government reports, it can be research updates, bibliographies, and some of it is scholarly and some of it is not, which is why often students are told to simply avoid Eric Documents. At your level, you can go through them and you can see yourself at, if something is scholarly in nature or simply a research update which has no real content. Those who are interested in the K-12 through principal track will be very interested in ERIC documents because they contain government reports, which are necessary for someone in leadership to know. But it's not a bad idea to search these materials separately. When you don't want academic journals and you do want to see ERIC documents, you can remove the search, click on the ERIC documents, and start reviewing those. Or if you want to see the magazines, more correctly called trade publications, they are short articles two to five pages, perhaps no bibliography, or very small two to five items in their bibliography. They're what we call in my profession, how we done good articles. Quick practical advice for the practitioner. That's what's in the magazines or trade publications area of ERIC. I'm going to remove the uh, magazines, and return to academic journals, which is where you will generally want to focus your results. 191 results is a good many, and there's a good chance that many of these are picked up because of our keywords, but not because of the subject. They're being picked up and they might be tangential. So how can we tell the database, I don't just want keywords, but I want the articles to be about a particular subject. Following the left menu and scrolling down, you can see that there is a subject option. And an initial list of subjects from this result, from this search result. So if I click on reading difficulties as a subject, I can see it will shoot down my results to 125. Of these 191, 125 of them are about reading difficulties. I did search on reading strategies as a keyword, so perhaps reading strategies would be my best subject search. So if I click on that as a subject, now we're down to 92, with all of them having a reading strategy as a subject. I highly recommend looking at subjects to helping you help you narrow down what you're looking for. Or you can see more and see all of the subjects being brought up by this query in these results. And you can pick several. I don't recommend that. I recommend a 
choose the best one, see what your results are, choose another as necessary, see what the results are. It helps you control what you're seeing, and if you've gone too far and suddenly you have only two results, you know you need to back up. Backing up can be done again here by simply clicking on the X to remove any subjects you wish to remove or remove the source types if you don't just want academic journals. Now that you have a set that you're happy with, and 92 is, is not a bad set, you'll want to read the abstracts. You can read the abstracts either by clicking on the title or without clicking, you can move your cursor over to this magnifying glass with the page and without clicking, it pops up the record and you can simply scroll to see the abstract. I highly recommend doing that for at least the first page. Don't be committed, don't be worried, just read 10 abstracts and see if your query is giving you what you expected, what you wanted. Perhaps it's giving you something better. Perhaps it's giving you information that you do not want. At that point, you can change your search, add things, subtract things, and again, reselect re your academic journals and your subjects as necessary. When you're satisfied with your result set, the next most important thing is to find out if we have that material. ERIC is not a full text all the time database. It is a full text some of the time database, as are most of our databases. So either you will see a full text link, PDF full text, or HTML full text, which indicates that Eric has this article. You can click on it. You can see that article. You can read it, email it, print it, save it, do whatever you need to do with it. And when you're finished, you can return to the result list and look at another. However, you can see that on this first page of 10, there are only three that are labeled full text. So let's look at the others. Another thing that you will very commonly see when you don't see a PDF full text or an HTML full text is the blue search for full text button. Now remember, we saw this earlier when we were using it to fill in our interlibrary loan form when we were looking for books in the CSU Union Catalog. Remember? The purpose of the blue search for full text in an article database is to find that full text. We have more than half a dozen databases that hold full text. Eric holds some, but other databases hold other things. So if we click on an article's blue search for full text button, it will tell us if that article is available in one of our other databases. So I'm going to click the button. Please do this with me. You see it opens up a new tab. And here it's saying, no online full text found which means we can move down to the next option, which is to request a copy. We did that before with interlibrary loan in our last video. We can request a copy, enter our ID number and our password. The form will be filled out as we saw previously, and we can submit that. Interlibrary loan for articles is about three working days. Articles are sent to you, to your interlibrary loan account, as PDFs. So you will receive an email saying it has arrived, and you will check your account, you'll find the PDF, and you'll download it. You may not use your interlibrary loan account for storing PDFs. They will sit there for 30 days, and they will roll off. So it's not a storage center, it's just a receiving. I'm going to close this tab now, which takes us back to our 
SFX results tab, and I'm going to close that too, which takes us back to Eric and our results set. It is important when using the search for full text button that when it opens these additional tabs, that when you're finished, to close them and return to your Eric result list. If you don't, the SFX technology will seem to act oddly, so you'll want to close those. Let's try another. I'd like to find one that we do have so that you can see what it looks like. If I go to the next screen and click number 11 and search for the full text, we can see that this is what it looks like when we have full text. It will say full text available and it will tell you the name of the database it will be taking you to to get that full text. If I click on the full text available link, it opens a new tab and takes us to this new area, Sage. When you land in a new database because of using the blue button to find the full text, you'll see that the full text might be over here, and this one says full text PDF. Sometimes it will say download. Sometimes it will just say PDF, sometimes full text. Sometimes it will be over here saying a variety of things. So don't be thrown off. Remember, when you're using the blue button, you can land in any of more than half a dozen databases, and they all put the PDF somewhere else. When you've downloaded this or read it online or printed it, you can then close this tab, close the search for full text tab, and return to your Eric query. There was one more thing I wanted to show you, and that is by returning to the previous screen, uh, page one. We see on number one and number two, there is no PDF full text, and there is no blue search for full text. This says that it's available full text from Eric. Now, usually that only happens when it is an Eric document. This is not an Eric document, this is an article. But if we click on the full text, it takes us to the free government provided version of Eric and the option to download it. So one way or another, it is trying to help you get that full text that you want. I'm going to close this tab and we're back at our result set. At this point, I want to return to the FAO Library homepage and take a moment to review. We've looked in Eric. We've learned about using the blue search for full text button to find full text in the library or for the blue button to lead us to the interlibrary loan form to order it if we don't have it in the library, an article. We've looked at how subjects can help us narrow down our search and how to tell different material, how to bring up different material in ERIC.